Today's exposition comes from Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20, which reads, Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us. Now, reading the petitions that Paul had previously prayed, someone might think, Whoa, Paul, I think you need to take it down a notch. After all, these petitions and the expectations joined to them are a bit lofty. For example, Paul had just previously prayed that the Ephesians would better comprehend the incomprehensible love of Christ to the end that they would be filled with the fullness of God. That's a big prayer. But was it too big? It's as though Paul is going to put the bigness of such petitioning in perspective. Because when compared with God's capacity, even the loftiest of our prayers are not so lofty. So here he breaks forth into doxology, a kind of ascribing of praise to God on the road to giving him glory. And on the road there, he first glories in the attribute of God's omnipotence. So he begins by writing, Now to him who is able... Now, I think it's worth noting, given the emphasis on God's omnipotence, that the Greek verb here, translated as is able, can be rendered as having power to. So, how able is God? How much power does He have? Well, I think the prophet Jeremiah put it well when he said, Ah, Lord God, behold, you have made the heavens and the earth by your great power and outstretched arm. There is nothing too hard for you. And God appears to echo that sentiment a little bit later on in the chapter where he says that he is the God of all flesh and there is nothing too difficult for him. So we know that God will do that which is in accordance with his will and nature. But the emphasis there in Jeremiah, even as it is here, is upon God's omnipotence. So how did Paul put it? Well, we see in our text that the Apostle Paul said that he is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think. Now, our English translation does a pretty good job at getting at the hyper-superlative nature of Paul's expression. Just in case the Ephesians, or anyone else, thought that Paul's previous petitions were, say, above reasonable expectation, it's as though Paul was saying that God's capacity to answer such prayers far exceeds even our loftiest expectations. It's not just that God can do all that we ask, or it's not just that God can do all that we can think, and it's not just that God can do above all that we can ask or think. It's that God can do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think what a motivation to pray now surely there will be things that you will pray not knowing whether or not it is God's will but as you think upon God's exceeding greatness and his capacity to answer such prayers for spiritual empowerment or the things that Paul prayed or even things that you haven't even thought to pray I think that you will be encouraged to praise him and pray to him but there's more. Paul goes on to say that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. So what is the power that is at work in us? Well, it's God's power, namely the power that comes via the person of the Holy Spirit. So how amazing is it to think that the same power through which God can do exceedingly and abundantly beyond all that we could ask or think is the power that comes via the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit in every son or daughter of God. No wonder why the scripture calls us to be continuously filled with the Spirit and to walk in the Spirit. Oh, how we ought to yield to His ministry. Oh, how we ought to believe that God can do the things that Paul has prayed for in this passage and even things that we haven't even thought to ask Him. So may you be exhorted today to recognize the incomprehensible capacity and the omnipotent power of the one to whom you are praying. And may you yield to the omnipotent power of His Spirit who is at work inside of you.